Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Some Ordinary Podcast. For some reason, Oompaville and Nux will not be here today, so I am filling in as the co-host for both of them. We have Mudahar here as usual, and Plain Rock 124 the infamous tech destruction YouTuber, is also with us. It's great uh, to be pl- back. Yeah, it is great to have you again. What have you been up to since last time? Just more destruction and some house buying, as you can see by the empty room. Dude, Very that's nice. like the ultimate YouTube like gamer house. You know, if you look at my house, it's all empty. <laughs> yeah, <pretty laughs> except much. one room. It, no, it is empty. Look. <laughs> An you, IKEA you, table with a bunch of junk on yeah. it for video recording. Yep. Uh, Dude, you, you, people like in our camp do not need much to live and be happy. It's like, what's that one meme? It's like, guys live like this and think it's okay. And I'm like, what's wrong with that, dude? <laughs> one television and one beanbag chair, no matter where you live. Yeah. No, but congrats on the house, man. Uh, thank you when very you gonna, much. When are you going to burn it down? Hmm. Probably accidentally sometime soon with, so, with all the stuff I do inside of it. Are you going to turn it into, like, a smart house and then burn it down? Then it can be, like, the ultimate tech destruction? Like, fucking, you know? Oh, yeah. Tech... Oh, uh, yeah. Can't wait to collect the insurance fraud. Yeah. yeah dude. I mean, you can't mention that right oh, now publicly. Oh, can, now they're not going to oh, let you cut collect that out, it. Cut okay? that out. The fr- yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But what, what have you been... What have you been... Uh, what, what, what is, like, feature content goals? What, what is, like, tangible in, like, the next couple months? Not your house, obviously. Mm. Uh, for me, I'm probably just going to keep on doing what I'm doing and... Whatever I feel like it too, because that's how I approach YouTube. If I feel like doing it, I will do it. If I don't, I don't. I don't have a schedule or anything. So yeah, if I enjoy making the content, then I'll keep on making the content that I usually do. If I want to diverge, then yeah. So, so one fine. day you could just go to the hardware store, buy f***ing Tannerite, and put it into your Tesla and be like, all right, boys, we're going to do another Model S destruction. <laughs> oh, we've got to be careful of the age restrictions, so maybe. Yeah, I was kind of wondering, actually, now, how, do, how does how does your, like, demonetization happen? Because usually when I'm on the self, like, and check, it's like, any stunt done in a non-professional manner. I'm like, no, yeah. wait a minute. I don't know if King no, is doing everything in a it, it also sense. mentions that no one, like, it's monetizable <laughs> if no one got seriously injured, so I never got seriously injured, so I always put that, and I think it counts. <laughs> I saw you two destroy a salvage car, and like you brought out a flamethrower. So I'm like, how f- you guys like? How, do, how how does that even go up? Like when I saw you guys whip out the flamethrower, I'm like, dude, this is a lithium battery powered car. <laughs> They're out there with like grass around them. I'm like, dude, this is like the worst fucking <laughs> way to handle it. Uh, there is an like, inter- interesting story behind that, but an art knows I'm, this too much. I probably can't say it on the podcast. Can, can okay. I say it? I mean, sure. I mean, yeah. I think I can give a pretty censored version of it. Okay, it's, okay, we'll uh, see. If not, we'll cut it out. So, so the first time I ever met uh, King in, in real life, uh, I was talking to him. Uh, I briefly saw how much he was making off the channel, and I was like, hey, you know, you're making enough where you could, like, you know, get a salvaged Tesla and, and smash it and just pretend like it works <laughs> and, like, turn a profit off that. Like, your channels, like, could sustain that. Yeah, he saw that like, after I uploaded a video where I destroyed a toy Tesla Model S, like, the one for kids where kids ride on it. And that thing has, like, 10 million views for some reason. So, yeah, like, I... Me and him was kind of inspired by that. <laughs> to go from there, he get he gets in touch with a guy named Rich Rebuilds. He's a Tesla YouTuber. This guy gets... We go up to New Hampshire where this guy's at. The guy puts this salvaged Tesla that looks good. It was just waterlogged, so the outside mm. looked fine. And it had it no just, battery. It had no battery. All the internals were taken out of it, so it wasn't dangerous. It wasn't going to catch on fire. And then... Uh, we get another Tesla, or or King got another Tesla that looks exactly the same as the the salvage one. <laughs> drives up, and then we cut to the broken one that looks like a it runs and operate and is operational. And then I believe he hooked up a battery to it just to get the screen to work for a second. Yeah, yeah. So then we could smash it, and then after that we detach that battery and then we went to town on it and it it wasn't actually dangerous there was no battery inside it it was completely safe but if i recall correctly the youtube team did have a problem with it when it was first released yeah but then i re-edited it and then yeah it was fine so yeah that's like the most i want to go in depth on that story okay that's that's like i mean like that, that that's almost like the best way of like youtuber i wouldn't say like deception but like peak youtuber like mindset it's like (laughs) 
salvage title car, <laughs> attach batteries to get the screen running very briefly. I mean, it's not like you have to rev the Tesla to make yeah. it make a noise or anything. So it's like, it's not that 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 like when I was watching it, I'm like initially I'm like, dude, that thing has like the biggest battery in the fucking world. Mm. And I mean, like, and then the flamethrower comes out. I'm like, man, y'all are fucking <laughs> wilding right now. I'm not even the only YouTuber who destroyed a whole ass Tesla. Like, there's another YouTuber who like actually blew it up, and it's way cooler than my video, kinda. Well, I mean, like, you know, if you want to. And if you thought you had problems with YouTube now, I and mean, then you're making a fucking explosive. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So fuck? I'm probably gonna stay, stay away from explosives for now. Maybe I'll experiment yeah. with fireworks in the future, but I think all the places I can do it in is illegal. So we'll see on that front. Well, we, we, the, the yeah, we did. I mean, like, yeah, we did fireworks in that video, but like. Maybe I'll implement it in more later on. <laughs> I, I still remember that day we went to the fireworks store because we came up with the idea. And then the, the guy there is like, what are you going to use these fireworks for? <laughs> he's like, oh, we're going to blow up a Tesla with them. And he's like, oh, okay. We're walking out of the place. He runs out after us. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did you just say? Because <laughs> we were driving in the Tesla, so he assumed that we were going to blow up the one that we were driving Uh which was fully functional. Oh, yeah. I do that a lot of my videos. Just, like, take a functional item and then pretend that's the thing I'm going to be smashing it. And then I switch it out with a broken item. I do that a lot just to save money. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I would expect that would be the smart yes. way to do it. Because I'm like, there's no way that you're just going to buy the... T I mean, like, well, like part some, of it yeah. you could... Yeah, some of the newer items, I like, I have to destroy it brand new because there's not any broken items of it yet on eBay. So... Yeah, yeah. like... If and Steam Deck just comes out, you're like, I'm gonna buy a fucking fresh one and then break that, and then I'm gonna fucking hmm. go buy a new one just for me. Oh yeah, That's by, a... oh yeah. By the way, I kind of look like a little bit of a mess because I had 30 minutes notes for this podcast last minute, and I was also finishing up editing a video to upload. Board smashing PSVR2, check it out. Uh, that's why I look like a mess, dude. That thing is such a fucking waste of money. <laughs> I would have just give it, sent you. Mine. I bought that shit oh. and played one game on it, and it's retired. Oh, There's yeah. like nothing for, dude. Yeah, be the yeah VR Beat Saber's not even on it yet. It's oh. dude, the VR shit is so sad. I was, uh, I was, uh, I did one thing recently with virtual reality. I went to a shopping mall. Um, mm. There was a there was a metaverse shopping mall <laughs> for all the crypto bros. It was as depressing. You ever see like a real life abandoned mall? You guys ever been mm. to it? Yeah. So like. For those of you who like don't live on the East Coast, like we have a lot of fucking shit tier malls that are closed in like mm. Ohio or something, and uh, we're talking like they have one store and like everything else is just dead. That's exactly mm. what the metaverse felt like. They were like, "Yo, you can come in here and you can shop for shit." And then I sign on and I log into the metaverse and I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> there's like three people here maximum." <sighs> I'm like, "This is just like reality, <laughs> completely dead." Mm. Yeah, and, and it. And then I was like, the only difference is, like, I spent hundreds of dollars mm. to do this shit versus, like, somebody <laughs> who just went to, like, a fucking <laughs> shitty mall in real yeah. life and called it a day. Yeah, when I went to CES, there was, like, so many Metaverse booths, and it was, most of them were, like, pretty sad. Like, one of them, like, got me to come over to, like, look at it, because I was, like, recording it to, like, honestly make fun of it later. But he was, like, demo demoing it to me, and then it randomly crashed, and it was, like... The internet it looks like the Wi-Fi in here is not working, or the internet. I forgot, but in the video, I just realized it, the computer was hooked up to an Ethernet wi wire. So I I don't know if it was the internet or just the Metaverse well, servers. What was the What was the Metaverse like? What were you doing in it? I was being demoed at it. I was being like shown a demo at uh, CES. They were like, yeah, but like, what, what was the demo of? Like, were they were they just like was it like a game? <laughs> it was, was it supposed like to be fucking... like for office work. Like they had a bunch of different rooms that like mimic like office stuff and uh, they also had like business storefronts in that and the thing was like 10 frames per second at best most of the time before it crashed so it's like this is the one weird thing that i always notice so i saw this one thing from facebook right where like you could do it in the office so it's like 10 dudes sitting with like the vr helmets on <laughs> but they still had a zoom call running in the corner so i'm like wait what's the difference yeah. here <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess. Dude, what are yeah. they fucking doing? Yeah, I guess you can have like one or two people who aren't actually in the office, but at that point just have a big TV screen. Exactly. Well, I saw the the thousand dollar headset that they released. It's like half off now. So and like, I destroyed that. Version. It was fifteen hundred at. It was like sixteen hundred at launch, and now it's down to a thousand. So that's it, that's indication of its success. 
Did you just want to break it because it was like one of those shitty Facebook products and you're mm. like, this is how I get my f***ing revenge on oh, these losers? Yeah. That, <laughs> that and like the Oculus yeah. and F Facebook is Oculus and now Meta brand is like mm. actually pretty popular. Like when I destroyed the Oculus Quest 2, that thing, I think that video is like 4 million views right now. So I was like, why, uh, why not? But I'll, I will say when I first saw the price of the MetaQuest Pro, I was like, this video probably won't make a profit, but oh well, <laughs> let's have fun. Yeah, it's like, exactly. <laughs> like, like, sometimes you just have to, like, throw the profit aside and be like, I gotta do this for the f***ing principle of it. <laughs> it you know actually did I mean? make a profit, but, like, yeah, it was an interesting yeah. destruction, but it is not worth it to, to, to buy for, like, the regular people. No. It is aimed towards businesses, but I don't think it's even worth it for businesses. I just think that shit is such a waste of time. Like, fucking... Mm. It's so uncomfortable. Oh, like, yeah. You're sitting there for, oh, like... Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, no, when I was wearing it, like, originally, I did want to buy a second one to keep because I wanted, like, the best gaming VR gaming experience ever, but I couldn't wear it for more than 30 minutes without, like, giving a burning, aching sensation on my forehead, mm -hmm. and it was just unbearable, so I had to return it. And I never had that problem with any other VR headset to that degree. You know, the thing is, I don't even like playing too many, like, video games from, like, a computer screen anymore. Mm. Like, and I'm just working on it so much that I'm, like, I'm done with it. Like, I get, like, an hour of gaming done, maybe a day. Mm. And, like, f and I'm just doing it in front of a television. I ain't gonna f***ing put on no headset and, like, flare my, flail my arms around. That's, like, that's really just insane. Like, it's mm. too much. Like, it's just, it gets to the point where it's, like nobody's gonna gravitate towards shit that's not comfortable, ah. you know? Like, it's just not, it's it's not where it's at. Like, I but, got into uh, VR because, honestly, I got a little bit tired of just, like, playing the games on, like, a TV and it's, like, basically almost all the same sometimes. Like, VR games, mm -hmm. like, you got just gotta find the right one offer, do really offer unique and fun experiences. Right. You just gotta know where to look, like, uh, there's a reason why the Oculus is so popular because, yeah, I would say they have the best games and, yeah, the PSVR 2 on the PS5, yeah. there still needs to be work to be done on the game front. If, on that. Only, <laughs> if only it was as easy as the fucking Wii, bro. Like, just playing Wii bowling and shit like that. If only mm. it was that easy. But I kind of want to pivot to something that I think a lot of us are going to actually be really interested about. So we all know what's happening with Ethan Klein this week. <laughs> no, I have not paid attention to what Ethan's done. In oh, oh, so. it, it, oh, I can speak on that because it kind of affects me too. Oh, is this the broadband yes! TV situation? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been yeah, calling is. that for years. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so um, I, I guess I'll summarize the whole situation for nobody that knows. So uh, a couple days ago ethan klein made a video where he talked about like i, I i'm 620 like this bbtv company owes me six hundred and twenty thousand dollars. been right? with them since 2017 now oh my god are you still with no them? no no <laughs> recently oh, thank dropped for that okay so we're so we're, we're we're free to shit on them right we're free to have a roast hour <laughs> uh, well with they're still withholding some of my funds so i wouldn't shit talk them too much but I don't know. I'll sue. Th I don't okay. know. I'll sue if they right. don't okay, release the rest of my funds. You, <laughs> I'm gonna give you the red pill right now. Have you seen the, the state of that company? I, I don't. I don't think you're getting it back, brother. Uh, they just. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Like they did delay my payments. Uh, uh like um. A month ago, a month. the but, same thing with Cal. But yeah, the, yeah, I did get the January payment, so I got partial part of it so yeah. far. But three so, more months remaining to get the rest. So the thing with the thing with these MCN companies like BBTV, for anybody that doesn't know, is MCN companies literally. Um, so back in the days of early YouTube, they were pretty important because the partner program was restricted, right? So. If all three of us wanted to get partnered years ago, we're talking like 2011, 2012 and shit like that, you had to go with them. And you didn't just go with the partnership company for, or, or like an MCN for the money, you went with them for things like 10 minute longer uploads or like, you know, custom thumbnails or like the premium branding shit that like a lot of the bigger channels had. Now, also, another tidbit that people forget about is you were able to avoid the content ID system if you were with those back in the day for managed partnership mm -hmm. status. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also, there were some, not all, that would get, like, preferred Google AdSense or whatever <laughs> the hell. Like, I think Logan Paul had, like, some crazy high CPMs. But mm. anyways, I would say around 2014, when the partner program was opened up pretty much to everyone generally, right? Like, you could just apply and get away with it. That's when MCNs truly f 
fucking fucked up and, and they, they, they were useless. Because throughout my entire life as a creator with an MCN, I've never been getting, gotten a brand deal. The only way that I got a brand deal is, uh, you know, through, again, the YouTuber community. Like, I work with Art here. He's like, we, we're pretty much managed over here. So, again, it's like direct. I'm not working with some, like, wannabe CAA talent agency type group in, in California that's trying to, like, skim money. So, the way that these MCNs work is, depending on the size of your channel, you would be given, like, a percent cut, right, of your AdSense earnings, and they would provide you a service. Now, if you were... If you were like a, a thousand sub Andy, right? Like a small channel and they predator, they like <laughs> on you, they take 40% of your mm. revenue. I've seen these contracts, 60, 40 splits. Yeah, my first common. MCN was with Maker, rest in hell. And, rest in piss, yeah. yeah. And like, I was like a slightly bigger YouTuber than most of them. So I think they usually did like 60, 40 with smaller YouTubers, but I got a 70, 30 wow me too i yeah. got them up to a 70 30 oh, so, i was in a wait you were with maker, maker too no i wasn't but i wasn't a maker i was with their subdivision uh polaris uh, mm. polaris which was pre called something before polaris. tgn the game station yeah, the or game something station like that. yeah, yeah. bring yeah. back all the good memories yeah, the, so we we were we were in that together yeah. so we had the, i had oh. the 70 so i'll tell you this one i had the 70 30 for a little bit nice. and then and that and then i moved up to the 90 10 and then I think briefly at a hundred zero. Damn. And then after a while, like, in and again, I had no real. They were always down to pay on mm. time or whatever. Like that was never a big problem. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was like, anyways, the whole f***ing company is shutting down. Yeah. Uh, by the way, <laughs> yeah, you're you're out. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, because usually when it came to an MCN, the hardest thing to do once you, getting into an MCN was easy as f getting out of it was like. And you know you're pulling teeth. Mm. So yeah, that's why I, I was kind of relieved when they shut down, so I can like go with a different MCN yeah. right away and just like get a higher cut. Like, and the only reason I went yeah. with the MCN with a, was in in the first place. I won't go too in depth with it into it, but mm -hmm. it was an issue with AdSense that is fixed now. I'm with AdSense right now. Yeah. I still have to confirm it, but like yeah, that's the only reason why I went with an MCN in the first place was because yeah. of ad. AdSense well, issues. Well, the reason it's it's actually a similar point with what Ethan Klein's story was. Yeah. So he jumped into it and he had an issue because he was in Israel at the time and uh, his AdSense account was like it was like if you wanted to make money in the state of California or the U.S. in general, he would have to like make a new AdSense account. So instead of dealing with all that shit, he signed up with BBTV that split one hundred zero. So the real drama here comes out from the fact that recently, when he had his accountant look into the finances. The channel memberships that they were getting, apparently, allegedly, BBTV, in Ethan's opinion, not mine or anybody watching this, <laughs> they were taking 30% of Ethan's channel membership money. Mm. So that totaled up after a course of time to $620,000. Now, I am totally on Ethan's side here because I believe 100% these MCN companies are, are like the devil, okay? They're all the devil, all right? They're all evil. So anytime, anytime that these guys have a chance to get f***ed, I'm all for it. Now, I firmly believe BBTV, I, I, it's of my opinion, they probably don't have the cash on hand to pay Ethan, mm -hmm. right? Because $620,000, if you're running a business, especially a business where your revenue, it comes in and you're only, you're only getting to keep like 10% of it, max. You're not going to have a lot of cash on mm -hmm. hand, at least as far as I understand. So they're probably not able to pay Ethan. So now it's going to be a situation where it's going to turn into a whole lawsuit. Oh. Probably not class action because <laughs> it doesn't necessarily work that way. Mm, I believe yeah. like for a class action, all contracts have to be unanimously the same. Anyways, point is, BBTV is now getting thrown under the bus by the <laughs> H3 community, which is a sizable internet community. And uh, it, it really is unraveling the last big MCN. Mm. And I was actually surprised watching Ethan's video, how many people were still actually signed with BBTV. <laughs> like, unironically, like, people were still with them. Uh, because I remember when my MCN dropped me, and this is probably back in the days, like, when I was, when J Station was a thing, right? This is, like, that far mm. back. This is a moment where, like, um, during one month, they literally like I like I'll explain the whole process. It's scary as shit. They like tell me that the the they're shutting down the MCN and my channel is going to be unpartnered. Now, thankfully, at the time, I had an SPM, which again, big thanks to Ethan Klein here because he was the one that hooked me up with the MC or like SPM, and the guy was like, "All right, chill out, <laughs> make a new AdSense account." I make one, and then like it's so scary with the wording because it's like, "Oh, you're making a new account. You can only have one." 
And then I'm like looking through. I'm like, do I have any inactive ones? So I'm going through the whole list. Mm. I make an MC, I make an AdSense, and it's like you're gonna have to wait like a month for it to go. I'm like, whatever. I don't give a. F- I'll miss out on a month of shit. They apparently, I think Google expedited my AdSense account. I think they do it for most partners in that situation. And then the whole like, basically the whole process lasted less than a day. It was actually f- way better than I expected. Mm. Yeah, when um, I disconnected from broadband TV like a week ago, a week ago or two. Uh, Google, I reached yeah, out to Google you're, you're to like, like yeah. dude, you are, <laughs> you're a, and you're a recent, <laughs> I know, like, yeah, oh I reached out, yeah, I reached out to Google asking if there will be any issues if I disconnect my MCN and they said no, if I had an AdSense account linked. So I think it, how it normally works for like regular creators, I don't know if I got any special treatment or anything, or if it's just the new whole mm-hmm. ad, forced link AdSense thing. But like when, yeah, when I got disconnected from broadband TV, my broadband TV partner manager yep. was just like, yeah, make sh- yeah, you got to re-monetize, but I never did because my AdSense account was already linked. So I like, yeah, that seems like a pain in the ass having to get like re-monetized if you like leave an MCN. So I'm glad that didn't happen. There was a glitch where a bunch of videos yeah. like had monetization turned off. I just turned them back on and now it's fine. It's <laughs> good. Yeah, it's a, like the thing is with like YouTube and a lot of these. I'm surprised that YouTube actually lets this happen. Like these MCNs still roll because mm-hmm. it's they like don't, I don't know. They don't allow new ones anymore. So there's the, the ones that still exist. They still hold some value because you cannot create a new MCN. But if you buy an MCN that currently exists, you could use it for your mm. own purposes. You could do like content ID claiming through the MCN, and there's. Uh, uses for it so there's some people that have been grandfathered into it that their company is still worth like a hundred thousand dollars just because some big conglomerate um they just buy it to use that grandfathered in system that they have in place okay all right like but even then it's like in just the like i saw it when ethan revoked his access it was still in the in like court of the the mcn i was like why can't youtube just step in and like and delink an account right there. They don't want to deal with it. Mm. They don't want to be, they don't don't want to put themselves in the middle of it. I will say, not saying any particular (laughs) MCN, but this is kind of the stunt that happened with all of them. Not all of them, but you know, all of them is, Mm -hmm. it started off where they were making crazy money at first. Machinima was taking 50, 50 (laughs) lifetime contracts. They were like Scientology. They gave, they gave people like billionaire year contracts (laughs) to sign. And uh, we take half of your money. They didn't do anything for them. You email them. They didn't even respond Mm. back. And they were just making uh, all this money. Uh, Giant companies like Activision were going to them and doing uh, sponsored messages through them. And Machinima was taking 90% off the top of these brand deals. So like they'd get $5,000, they'd give the creator 500 and the creator Mm. doesn't know better. Uh, So they got really greedy. Then there was this company called, I believe it was the Game Network, which Broadband TV actually bought out at some point. And they they changed the model because originally it was, we sign people in these crazy unfair contracts and we only take the creme de la creme of YouTubers that are actually pulling in views. At that point, they said, why don't we just automate this and then allow anyone in that has a thousand subscribers. Then at that point, the floodgates opened. It's just allow anyone in and then they just start fighting over the cuts. We'll take 55th, now it's 60, 40, now it's 70, 30, now it's 80, 20, 90, 10. Now it's 100, zero with a sign-on bonus if you're popular. And they changed their model from, we're making a profit off this because um, we're siphoning off YouTubers and being useless middlemen to, mm-hmm. we're just showing growth and having all of this money through flow through our business. Broadband TV, all these companies, they like the flow. They get a plane rock signed on, <laughs> All of Plain Rock's monetization, all of that money goes through the business. This business has hundreds of millions of dollars running through it. Rest in peace. And then they they sell it off and then it's like, oh, shit. And they could get investors. They could get a buyer that says, listen, listen, this business, this is big. Online video, that's the future. This company is doing $100 million in advertising each year. Oh, it's not making money now, but it's going to. They run some BS business model to claim that this is profitable at some point. Then, you know, a little bit of, you know, shady things happen behind Mm. the scenes and at some point it goes bankrupt and then they're not paying people on time and then all the youtubers are out of their last paycheck or two Mm. because they couldn't uh, afford it Mm. Um, so should i say rest in peace to my last three months revenue very good i warned did i not warn you about this like two years ago you did and you were 100 percent right the thing the thing about like the, the thing about this is like for i think for like 
most YouTubers, like, and, and you got to understand, like, YouTube is, like, one of those things where, like, the 1% of the 1% are living off of it, right? Like, mm. that's just how the industry is. Um, for most YouTubers that are, like, you know, your, your uploaders or whatever, like, they're month, like, they're, they're kind of living paycheck to paycheck almost, right? <laughs> like, there's no... The, the thing about YouTube is, like, there's no pension plan. There's no fucking 401k at the end of the road. There's nothing about that. So unless you're making a ton of money and you're able to invest that money, um, there is no, like, you have a few years to grind out. And then after a while, you know, you taper off. You're making good money, but you're not making that, like, your fucking gravy train money you once were. And usually that's fine. But, like, for a lot of the YouTubers, they don't even get to that stage. Like, they're making they're making decent money. They're making good money. They're making professional salary money. But, like, if you miss out on a month of earnings and, like, it's gone to some fucking shithole company like this, bro, that's, like, you're getting, like, you're behind on bills and all that mm. stuff. Like, it's so fucking catastrophic. Yeah, I first got and a like, taste of the BBTV fucking when they, like, delayed payments, like, for three weeks, like a day before, I think a day or two before we were supposed to be, be paid. Like that's what started mm -hmm. the whole, yeah, thing. And then, yeah. And then Ethan recently, yeah, also exposed well, them. Well, Ethan's situation is super f***ed, but it's like, okay, obviously $620,000, that's a mm. lot of money. Like no matter who you are, that's a good chunk of f***ing money, right? Yes. Like, if, if you took six hundred thousand dollars away from me, I I would obviously notice it. Mm. Now, luckily, Ethan Klein is also in a situation where I think he can weather it better than other people. Yeah, but it's like, he'll probably be you're fine. You're gonna have to f***ing sue him. You're yeah, gonna have to yeah. take him to court. Now, it's f***ed up because Ethan was saying it on his podcast. He's probably gonna spend more than he's gonna get uh. back in just like suing people. But he also just doesn't give a. F mm. Like he's crazy like that. Self admittedly. Uh, I just wish and he I'm sued like, them after BBTV pays me out the remaining amount. <laughs> well, like the thing is, if he's if, okay, if the lawsuit kicks in, like BBTV is bankrupt out. Like it's done. Oh, like, oh no! Have no tell, you have connections. Money. Tell him to wait until I get paid out. The <laughs> <laughs> I, but the thing, like, I really, I really do. I think they will owe you. Like, you can definitely. Here's the thing: if they do go bankrupt, though, I'm pretty sure. And and if we can talk further about this too, because they're a Canadian company, and I'll help you out mm. the best way that I can. Okay, cool. You could probably get your money back from them in like a bankruptcy uh, filing, because they'll do. They if they owe yeah. you, and you can prove they owe you, you can get your money mm. out of them. Hopefully, so, hopefully, won't be Defy no, Media again. Guys. Broadband TV is publicly traded. I believe this is their stock, BBT Holdings Inc. They're a Canadian company. Um, back, in, back in 2021, their stock went up to being worth like around $15 at its height. And now it's currently worth 43 cents. Bro, they're, 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 they're worth the... Wait, I just want to see something. Are they worth less than Face Clan right now? <laughs> oh, geez. Well, Face Clan's risking being uh, delisted right now. Uh, no, I think they're going to get... De it's not risking. They're, they're, a month of, they're less than a month from being delisted off the NASDAQ. <laughs> it's that bad. Yeah. You know, they got their letter uh, about a couple weeks ago, like a week ago. They got a letter from the NASDAQ. It's like, you're... you're a f like, uh, let's see who's off the stock now. market first, broadband or phase. P place your bets. Well, actually, believe it or not, Face Clan is worth right now more than BBTV. Oh, no. So, uh. <laughs> so let, let's uh. let's not. Yeah, okay. Here's how bad B BBTV's market cap right now is $6.4 million, which is they like. Just, they just bought another company for like a decent amount of money in the space that we're in, um, like a competitor of, of Nano Zebra. They like bought a, sh a subdivision of it for a couple million dollars. I think, don't quote me on this, but I think it was might have been five million. Brother, I, ah. I don't even know where they're getting this money from, but like they are, they are just yeah. Like way way back way back in twenty twenty, these guys were they had their peak. You would say around like fifteen bucks per share, mm. and now they're, they're they've been a penny stock literally since like twenty twenty two. Like since pandemic, pandemic has been the worst for them. And I know Ethan brought up like. And they took like twenty million dollars in loans or something, probably <laughs> to pay back another loan. In his opinion, which I really do think this business is on its way out, and I, it's going to be worse than Defy Media because Defy Media was like what one point four million dollars. Right? Yeah, and not too many a, creators in that. Not too many creators. This bro, from what I've been reading, they probably have everyone under the BBTV holding. Well, anyone okay? that's in an MCN is probably in broadband <laughs> yeah. TV. Like mm -hmm. any YouTuber that's still in one, that's the only one that remains. Um, the crazy thing is, like they 
they had people going to all these events. I remember going to like Playlist Live. Mm. That's where I met King, and like they had a, a guy there that's like that they mm. they buy rights to like a booth and like an exclusive access to yeah, areas. And and they're trying to sign people on, offering mm-hmm. people these deals. There's like mm. hundred zero <laughs> splits. It's like where's the money being made? You're flying team members to a, a resort to like pitch it to YouTubers for them to sign on, and then you make no profit off mm. them because it's they get zero percent cut like what's the business model Mm. it made no sense and i told everyone like i I remember there's videos from years ago where i'm telling people if you are stuck in one of these someone's gonna be stuck with the the hot potato at the end of this Mm. yeah Uh, like my most recent interaction in person interaction with them was at uh, the last vidcon they they had this like uh booth set up at, at another hotel where you need to like to know someone in the industry to get in and yeah i just talked it seemed normal like I don't think we're going to get another broadband TV lounge at VidCon this year. No, they're not. Oh, they're they're oh, it's over for them. Like they're not going to be a functioning company. Oh no, I would say. Like the thing is, it like so your last three months is like, and, and I would assume for like looking at your channel, my channel is the same thing. That's a f- ton of money. Mm, yes. Fuck, like fuck please donate to my months. GoFundMe. I'm about to be poor. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean like that. That's they they definitely got a. F- can pay you out for mm. sure, hundred uh, percent. Hopefully, like know, yeah, when yeah. when like I got dropped by uh, Maker Studios when they went bankrupt. Mm. I, I think they were owned by Disney, so yeah, Disney yeah. can't afford to like pay everyone back and not get yeah sued. Well, because they're they're gonna pay you back because they don't want to deal with the f-ing lawsuits yeah, afterward. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like it's the funniest thing. Like when the IRS owes you money, people don't like some people don't know this, but when the IRS owes you money, they they will send you mm. out a check and they will call you. It's like, did you cash the f-ing check in? Mm. Did you cash it like every hour of every day? They'll be like, "Did you cash it in? We we owe you money. Make sure you accept the f- money, because like any time they owe you shit, they want to make sure it's zeroed out so it never f- spills over." <laughs> Same for Disney, anything. So, so yeah, good good on Maker for at least not yeah. keeping my money. Well, <laughs> here, here's the thing: is with Defy Media, there, there's two ways that all of these MCNs have played out. Every single one of them, it looks like broadband TVs in the early stages of this. I have no idea what's going to happen there. For Defy, they just went bankrupt. There was maybe some fraudulence. I don't know. No one got their money. It was it was just over the bankrupt proceedings. Um, with the other ones, they would just get bought out by some bigger company, take the on the debt, and then just say we're going to strip it for parts. They have some stuff here. We'll pay off everyone what we need to. We'll 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 pay this person, this person, this person what's owed to them, and then move on. If broadband TV is able to just find a buyer that wants it for parts saying, we'll take it on without it going bankrupt, they'll just pay everyone out and then go from there. If they're not able to find someone, mm. then that, you're, you're out the, of luck. The whole stipulation here is like, is the f***ing paying out people going to cost more than the parts are ever mm. worth? That's though? the question. If With that's Defy, owes, that's what happened. Uh, mm. If they owe so many f***ing people, right? Like 1.4 mi- Like The thing is, even with Defy, it's like YouTube came in and made it whole, right? And obviously YouTube being owned by Google, it's like one. Point four Wait, so did YouTube for... like repay the creators that like lost money? I believe YouTube came oh, in. Oh, and, like, okay, made okay. I shouldn't have too right? much to worry about then. Hopefully, well, YouTube. <laughs> well, well, the thing, hold on. Define. Let me actually. I feel like I'm talking. I know my Google just did some layoffs and stuff recently, and the stock's not as good as it used to be. So, uh, I, I, don't I mean, know. that's the industry as a whole right now. Ten percent, mm, yeah. like fucking average layoffs. But well, when you're in a bad spot in the industry, are they going to and broadband TV owes people a bunch of money again? Like, I just want to preface this. We do not know what's going to happen with broadband TV. Maybe it's all legitimate. They're going to pay everyone and they're going to rebound from this. We can't say. I'm not going yeah, to. Yeah, like, like, who knows? Like, right now, it's like Ethan's in a war with them. And Ethan says that they're, like, kind of on the verge of being insolvent. And, you know, part of what Ethan says kind of resonates with me a little bit with my business expertise as well, like, looking at them. But at the end of the day, it's like nobody knows a business unless you work in it, right? Like, nobody has any f-ing idea how, like... Mm. nobody has any clue about the financials so tomorrow broadband tv could make ethan whole you whole everyone whole and they can move around running these predatory contracts hopefully god's willing right Mm. like it's all we can hope for because this is no matter what whoever this is a stressful time for any youtuber in their network right because Mm. it's like if you're getting paid a month later that again that's bad especially like you're living paycheck to paycheck even worse if like you're a big content creator and uh in 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 like you have a business right like you have employees like you know if if i'm not able to pay employees like i'm fine like i have my money but like if my employees don't have money then i'm 
right? Like they're fucked even more. So that that's a big issue. And I don't know, BBTV, weird company, weird MC, and the last big holdout, to be honest with you, mm. because it's not like there's Maker anymore. It's not like there's any of these other companies. They're all down. Yeah, and just stick with AdSense right now. Like if that goes down, there's probably going to be bigger problems to worry about. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, the whole system is run through AdSense, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like, it's all run yeah. through Google. So it's like, if Google stops yeah. paying out creators, everyone's yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that'll, that'll be a big problem. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just want to run something by everyone. Here's a little moral of this. There is a moral to this, probably. I've been screaming from rooftops about MCNs being a scam for the past decade. Mm. I saw it really early on that this was not a I'm sustainable sorry. business model. I'm sorry, I didn't listen. <laughs> well, it, it's on you at the end of the day. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm, that you... Oh. you Listen, I've, I've been screaming from the rooftops about this since I was like a teenager. I saw this when I was 17 years old running my YouTube oh, channel. And big I IQ. Left. I don't know. Like, I just – I don't know why no one else saw it. Um, I'm sure Muda saw it at that point too. Oh, I was um, out of it. I was done. Yeah. Like, if it so, wasn't for the 100 zero. So I saw Maker Studios sold to Disney for $500 million. That mm -hmm. might be one of the greatest scams of all time. Because they just closed it down a couple of years later, <laughs> wrote it off as a loss. I was a teenager, and I could have told Bob Iger that that was a scam business. No one listened to me, though. Uh, uh, so oh, funny. It, it I just, went from maker to broadband TV. Great. <laughs> Disney Disney basically got scammed for half a billion dollars, which in the uh, grand scheme of things for Disney I is like, like that. whatever. <laughs> Disney <cool>. scammed. <laughs> still a decent chunk of change. It's still a decent chunk of change for Disney. And I, I'm sure they're using parts of Maker or something going forward. Maybe they did something. The thing is, it's no. like I knew it was a bad idea because when like they sold it for that much, I'm like, how is it that they're reporting all this revenue when they have to pay it out to the creator a month later anyways? It's like, it's in a trust account. Like, it's not like no. they're using it to they, blow themselves up. They were just able to show that they were running a crazy amount of money through the business. Mm -hmm. And they explained away the lack of profit with, we're pre-profit right now. In a couple of years, we're going to be rolling in it. This is going to be the biggest thing ever. Um, that's That That was a, the selling point. And that's how all of these places sold themselves. And then for a lot of these a lot of these MCNs, what happened was either they sold at the high, which they should have done. Some of them like lingered on and then sold for parts. And then they just get passed around from like AT&T to like some other company to some other subdivision. And it's just like these weird names. So you look into like who owns Machinima now? Like I have no idea. I don't even think Machinima is around yeah. anymore. I think it's just It's not around. Dead. But the rights to the logo and the name and whatever oh, they had I know left. that Charlie wanted to buy it. Right. <laughs> right. No. Somebody wants to buy Machinima. You're right. Well, I, I know Stuttering Craig of Screw Attack, he sold himself to The Roost, who I believe sold themselves to AT&T. And I know he was trying to get the rights to Screw Attack back. I don't know if it actually worked mm. um, or where he's at with that. Um, but, yeah, it's like – what is Screw Attack worth to anyone besides Stuttering Craig? Uh, like, it's not like there, some random other person is going to buy it and then yeah. start Machinima it from scratch. right now is owned by uh, it's it's currently owned by Warner Media, I think. Mm. So Warner Brother owns it. Mm. So yeah. what are they doing with it? And all <laughs> well, that's the thing is Warner's worth so much money, and there it's a, hundreds of billions of dollars they're probably worth. Charlie coming in saying, hey, you have this weird thing. I'll buy it off you for $50,000. It's just – it doesn't even matter to them. It's just chumped – like we'd rather just keep it mm. at that point. So I guess point. what our executives are spending on Coke. Again, <laughs> just a joke by the way. I'm, I'm sure all the fine Warner mm, Brothers executives. Are, mm. yeah, they're, yeah, exactly. They love that Mexican Coca-Cola as much as everyone else. But mm. Jesus Christ. Yeah, 50 k to them is like – nothing that's just like pissing away money <laughs> but you know it's the end of an era i think we've pretty much covered all we needed to cover mm. on it i really uh. do hope the best for everyone on it like especially you king like since you're the last mm. and old out with them like, <laughs> can, um, well you know. re well i recently dropped them but can the title of this podcast be plain rock loses all his money <laughs> plain rock got scammed <laughs> oh, yeah I, honestly yeah oh. you got to maybe it should be like <laughs> In board destroying plane rocks bank account bbtv <laughs> oh. Uh, oh one more oh. yeah one you, more why thing. don't you go to their head their headquarters with a sledgehammer oh and do a tech destruction video no. on their office space oh no, protests outside there yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm down to fly down to california with you and like go to their front office and no, they're in canada like, oh shit vancouver yeah let's well, go down to the city protest california for me. <laughs>
protest. Yeah, I mean, shit, I'll go. To- I- hey, listen, man, I have no connection to this company. God bless, dude. <laughs> you know, every time I ever got emailed by them, I always sent them pictures of goats here, like a shock <laughs> image back. Oh, and they God. still, it would, it would just be another fucking, like, recruiter who, like, emailed uh. me. I'm like, all right, you're getting another goat. Like, I think the last picture I sent them was, like, Chris Chan nudes. And I was like, all right, cool, uh. let's see if you're going to respond to it. Uh, before, uh, that's- before we move on from this topic, I know some people are probably curious if I also got scammed the same way Ethan allegedly got allegedly got scammed uh yeah, so I checked my opinion. contract from when I first signed up it was around the same time Ethan signed up and the same uh clauses in my contract but I can't speak on the memberships because I never did memberships I checked my other sources of revenue from YouTube and they all seem to be uh fine so I think it's just memberships so for those of you wondering yeah I Help, so I didn't get uh, scammed by the membership part, if, if you guys I, are wondering. I, I know back in the day, any sponsored messages they brought to people, they take 50% off the top. Ma, never you brought me one. the part about it? When you sign up to a company like this, you give them so much more than they give you. Just imagine putting your face on their website. Uh, That's worth more than whatever they're f***ing paying you. Uh, yeah, Simple as that. I, I don't know but, if I can say this, but... And it will sound stupid, but yeah, the only reason I signed with them is because they gave me a signing bonus that was like decent. I mean, <laughs> each but year. it's good to be true it's, almost. Yeah, yeah. It, it's decent at the time. Yeah, like now, for like sure. you, you like know. Art told me multiple times when I t- told him about the signing bonus about each year. He was like, "It's too good to be true," and now I'm fi- just finding out. So, yeah. I'm the clown in this episode today. Clown on me. <laughs> hey, no, that's all good. We all make mistakes. We were all part of a sinful MC. All of us were part of an MC. I got scammed too back in the day by those companies. That they took. The, yeah. I, I don't even want to think about the thousands upon thousands of dollars that they had siphoned out of my paychecks mm. just because for doing I, nothing for me. I, hey, listen. I, I write it off as a in learning expense. Me and you were part of the same MC, and so it's like we both got. The same way, me, I, me and Art were coworkers getting screwed together. Oh. I love. I remember when Let I signed on. To, I remember when I signed on to Polaris uh, under Maker. They were like, "Yeah, man, we're gonna we have all these like tips and tricks. All these big YouTubers are with us. We're gonna show you how to grow your YouTube channel to the next level." I sign on. The partner manager they give me was just some like. 25 year old dude with no experience making youtube videos and you know what his advice was to grow my youtube channel all this like expertise that they told me to sign on they he told me to tell people to subscribe at the end of my videos damn bro that's legendary dude. It, it was great and um when things really went south there um to get out of my contract i was fortunately 17 years old when i signed it <laughs> and no one bothered to check like my age before signing the contract so i'm like i want out and they're like oh no you can't do that and i'm like i'm a minor mm-hmm. and they're like wait a minute how'd you sign on if you're a minor i'm like because you idiots never asked <laughs> me because you guys like are so dis uh, dysfunctional you guys can't do anything right mm, yeah the only reason i was able to get out i don't know if they would have just let me out but like yeah my contract was ending it on like april 1st Ooh, happy april fools but like yeah mm-hmm. the, the only re- i don't I think, yeah, that was probably the only reason I was able to get out recently. Like, I have some friends also trying to get out of broadband TVs right now. So, oh, let's see how that goes. I mean, you know, the, you know a strat? The, can't you just, like, fake being a lawyer or something and, like, send them a legal notice? There's probably some law against that. Like, okay, okay, no, this reminds me of, like, you remember the up story of like this one girl that was like she she had like a bunch of non-consensual so she had <laughs> this one girl had non-consensual videos of her on hub and so she sent a ton of messages to them and like try to get it removed they didn't do it so one day she was like all right it. i'm gonna pretend to be an attorney mm-hmm. write them a f-ing legal notice and within an hour i was like oh yeah shit yeah we'll get rid of all this right now <laughs> do, you, do, do you remember when like redditors loved hub like they were just obsessed with it, how great yeah, the website they was. They still do. <laughs> what? I don't I watch. Do. I just well, <laughs> you, you and Matt Pat both. Me neither. Um, <laughs> I've never we, seen a p- in my life. <laughs> nope. Here. No, I just remember that. that those guys, just those coomers on Reddit, they they always were like, oh, like it's better than YouTube. Like we should shift over from YouTube to. P-. Like what are you talking about? Of course they. And then yeah. meanwhile, you found out all this abuse was going on the website, and they had to clear out like all of their. Uh, user uploaded content because there was all this like st- uh, nefarious stuff on there. 
good times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Reddit, Reddit is like I, I just I, I love like Reddit communities because it's like the most out of touch fucking like losers that you'll ever find. <laughs> literally on there. I mean, same I mean, Reddit so itself is a cool place. Like, if you want to learn shit and you want to like and do something quick on your computer, you like you type in your question and you put Reddit at the end of it, and it's like, all right, I found my answer. But usually some of those communities, man, like... Well, yeah. that, that's one thing of using it as a resource to learn something mm -hmm. v versus being a member of the community. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. raise of hand, who doesn't have time to browse Reddit? I recently deleted my oh, Reddit I don't account. Know. I don't know. <laughs> that's good. Like, it's the biggest time sink ever. You go on there, it's just a bunch of, like, like young guys in college and have, yeah. like, office jobs that just sit mm -hmm. on there and scroll all day long instead of getting their work done and, like, doing mm -hmm. something I, useful I with their life. I use Reddit, so, like, whenever I'm, like, writing scripts on my computer or, like, doing, like, some f***ing virtual machine stuff, I'm, like, I just Google the answer on there. And I'm, like, somebody, mm -hmm. it's, like, in, it's, like, a f***ing, like, Substack or, like, whatever f***ing, like, Stack Overflow. Like, you just have it, mm -hmm. like, quick, handy resource, and then you're, like, Alt F4 out of it. What? Although, I do love one subreddit a lot. It's, like, subreddit drama. Like, usually mm. they just have, like, in, like, the most random shit. It's what, it's mm. how I found, like, cool stuff, like the art, art, like, the, the art moderator. You guys remember that story? Like, in somebody uploads this image oh, on, yeah. like, r slash art, and, like, <laughs> this one <laughs> virgin un unwashed moderator signs on and it's like that's ai art uh, trust me i did the analysis it wasn't ai art it was like somebody's actual like drawing and the guy still after being corrected mm. by the community signs on and stops it it's like i think there's nothing sadder in life than being a mod mm. for like discord for Reddit free. No, yeah exactly. oh yeah de definitely <laughs> no the reason the reason i deleted my reddit account was because yeah i was endlessly scrolling but like i'll admit i before i deleted it i scrolled for reddit through reddit for like one to two hours a day and you and, it, like reddit is basically mm -hmm. what like tiktok and instagram are for women yeah. and facebook for old people like nerdy 20 year old guys that's what reddit mm, is to but, them yeah. it's just this like, endless yeah. scroll yeah you don't get anything out of it you're just wasting all your time like i i just i yeah i'm at a point in my life where i just don't understand how these people have hours a mm. day to just browse reddit <laughs> play video games watch tv it's like it's like the it's like the i love how like so this is how i know when you have like nothing to do when you have a gimmick account on twitter like when you're running yeah. <laughs> Uh, so how do you got that? How do you got that free fucking time? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but the thing that really pissed me off and made me delete my Reddit account is just Reddit's just a whole big echo chamber with most of the same yeah. ideologies. Like w one of the subreddits, I uh, remember. I think it's called uh, "Remember This uh, Love for Landlords." Yeah. Yeah. So Reddit, I don't know who did it, but like someone at Reddit got pissed about it, so they like got rid of like the current mods of that subreddit, and now it's like an act. Like it's a like. Love for landlords was like a satire where people pretend to love landlords, but I guess someone didn't get the satire because, like, they replaced all the moderators with moderators that actually hate landlords. So that uh, subreddit is just actually just, like, another place to shit-talk landlords as if there weren't that many uh, landlord shitting places on Reddit already enough. So, yeah. Yeah, it's like anti-work shit. It's like, and you have, like, the dog walker mm. that does, like, 15 hours. <laughs> like, that's all the Redditors are. I think it, listen, my rule is, like, you have a very limited amount of life, okay? So you want to stack paper as much as you can, and fucking, my rule in life is, like, make money, okay? Like, that's it. Make money. Get All this. right? Yeah. Make a lot of cash and finance the people you love around you, and that's life, right? Like, mm. and me, when I think of money, I'm like, give my parents a better life, help my brother to school, I already am fine. Like I'm good. Like if in, like if if all my business stopped tomorrow, I'd be fine, right? Like it's whatever. But like fucking just like the idea of like going onto a board, spending your day because like you wake up, you gotta fucking spend your day sitting in front of your computer and you're moderating something for free. Like this used to be a paid for thing, you know what I mean? Like fucking, <laughs> like a desk computer job, and now you're doing it for free. Like what the fuck is going on? And then like. Since you're doing it for free, like, these people get off on the power for it. Like, you're a moderator for a Reddit board. Okay, you timed my account on. Who gives a f***? I'm going to go and do something else. <laughs> you're still going to be here f***ing moderating a board. <laughs> like, what well, the f***? Th this, is, this is what I, I... Get a job. When you have these anti-work subreddits or people that they just want to spread communism. <laughs> okay, I get it. Capitalism is not good for some people. It's it screwed them over. Big businesses mess with people and they have yeah. dead end jobs. I get that. What's better for you? 
saying you're going to overthrow the government and instate <laughs> capitalism in America, which is not going to happen, like, no matter what you say, and, like, you sitting on the red, it's not going to change it, or going out and then just being the winner in the system. Like, I don't know, I'm in the position where I'd rather, you know, work and bust my butt and try to be a winner in the system than uh, fight against something that is just not going to be changed, if you're being realistic about it. Uh, I mean, the, the one of the one of the arguments that I hate, and I'm glad we actually pivoted to this, too, this is going to be one of those, like, cancelable topics, because you are <laughs> sounding like f***ing right-wing nutbar capitalists, apparently, in the eyes of Reddit, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't disagree with them, because their complaints are actually valid they oftentimes. Are, like, here's the thing. Big business, capitalism, it does cause a lot of f like there are like here's the thing if amazon like big companies like that when you get to a size that big there is no joke amazon exploits the f out of its workers jeff bezos does not get rich by stepping on the nuts of somebody there's a show called the boondocks you ever watch that yeah, yeah. there's a character on that show called uh Wunsler, ed Wunsler, right like he's like this 50 60 year old like multi-billionaire capitalist right like f***ing, this dude is like the exact definition of like an american like f***ing, like like just shit business owner like he makes a shit ton of money but he steps on the community below him and he shits on like anybody working for him but that's like a caricature right and it's like a pretty accurate caricature of like some of the largest business figures like it doesn't matter if you're elon musk it doesn't matter if you're bill gates it doesn't matter if you're jeff bezos you are far beyond the fucking system and everyone else is just like a fucking lego block to them but that doesn't extend to people doing small businesses. Like me and Art are people that are doing small businesses. Like our businesses are small. We're not anywhere near Amazon, nor are we ever gonna be anywhere near Amazon, I think, right? Like it's not in our organization. Um, and I'm just speaking for me and Art. Like I, I don't know like what you're doing uh, in the background. Art yeah, like jump in terms of business, do you mean like run by with employee, you have employees? Cause I don't have any employees, I don't think. Well, like run, yeah. Like if you're like me, we hire people cause I do like, I'm not doing YouTube. I'm more of a property management type of person now and I run my own like business holdings. Like that's what I do. Um, I know art, you do like nano zebra. So we have employees, we have like shit that we have to worry about. We're small businesses. Like I can say comfortably, I'm not exploiting people that work for me. Mm. Okay. Like I pay people good. I make good. Everyone wins. Right. Mm. But like, we're not like when I'm talking about winning in the system. When Art's talking about winning in the system, it's like you can either, bitch, right, or you can grind like me and him did at our very like not super young age because we're still young people. But when we were younger, you make that seed money, and you can either blow it off on like stupid shit, or you can reinvest it into like actual tangible assets and businesses and work that. And that's winning. So it's like you can you have two roads, right? You have a fork in the road. You can either on reddit or you can do what me and art did and like i would say i'm more comfortable on the fork that we went versus moderating the anti-work reddit and then mm. being made fun of by like f***ing tucker carlson or like <laughs> jesse waters jesse on Fox Waters. Yeah. which day. way modern man <laughs> yeah exactly it's like literally the way it's like the f***ing you know it's like youtubers like either you become like a f***ing you know edp 445 where you have a shitty music <laughs> career right like pick one or the other so I, I, I'd rather go to like the f***ing the, the side that wins versus like the side that's just sitting there because you don't get anything out of being that. And I, I think that's where most of like, unfortunately, when I go onto YouTube, like most of the recommenders that get fed to me because I've been watching like Destiny ever since, that's all the f it's just doom, gloom, blame everyone but yourself. And I'm like, damn, I don't know how you guys can live like that. Like, that's just depressing, man. Like, it's, it really is just in misery loving company mindsets to me. And well, I, I understand the complaints, but shit. <laughs> I just learned this concept recently. I, I've never been to a therapist or anything before. I just like, you know, go to the gym and lift weights. That's what I do. <laughs> but but uh, I, I talked to somebody and like I was explaining the concept that you go to a therapist and they don't actually tell you what to do to improve mm. yourself. They just like let you talk it out and they hope that you come to that conclusion. Mm. I just learned that recently. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, save so, some like, money. Just, pay, just, talk, them to just talk to yourself. I mean, like, they'll talk to you and, like, yeah. they'll try to help you work out problems. But if it's, like, I feel terrible, like, I'm out of shape, um, like, I, I always feel bad, they're not going to straight up say, you should start exercising and eating healthier. They will not tell you that. Like, they're not allowed to, apparently. <laughs> I guess that's, like, what a life coach does, and that's different than a therapist. Hmm. Dude, life coaches are, like, the biggest scams in the world dude those guys i i i don't even want to get into it. like life coaches i have like a family friend who like he his, one of his buddies moved in and he's his occupation is a life coach 
And it's like, dude, the guy lives in like the f***ing most like insane squalor in the world. Like you go to his house, it's just, it smells like marijuana and fail. And I'm like, wait, how the f*** are you a life coach for someone? Well, like I come into your house and it smells like a f***ing frat house. It's like, you're these, it's like these losers that say they're YouTube gurus and will, uh, you know, Oh, I mean, th this is what happened at Maker Studios back in the day to me. Yeah, we're going to help you grow your YouTube channel, man. We know how to make that work. You talk to them, they don't know anything. Like, if, if you knew how to grow a YouTube channel, why would you be <laughs> spending all your time trying to, like, s sign people well, like, onto something? Why don't you just well, the, make the videos and make all this money then? Yeah, the, the why, thing why is, give it's up your like, secrets? The, the, exactly. The thing is, is, like, when you're, like, a successful business person, you're not running a course telling other people how to be successful business uh, yeah. people as well, too. Mm -hmm. I could, and I thought about this. It's like, damn, because I, I, I talked to somebody, and they paid one of these YouTube guru guys $7,000 to help them, like, grow a YouTube channel. And then it's like, man, I'm in the wrong business. I could do that. But then I realized my time's better spent, you know, Growing instead things of the way chasing the seven thousand, chase the fourteen thousand. <laughs> well, it's not just that; is that there's only yeah. so many hours in the day. If I spend so many hours just teaching other people how to grow a YouTube channel, that's like there's a very finite amount of time, and I I spend an hour with each person a day. I'm working eight hours. I only have eight people. Like, okay, that could that could be a lot of money. Don't get this, me wrong. This is this is a gamer from the gamer from Mars coming out. He's like itemizing his time. I'm itemizing my like, time. Optimizing. It's like, and then at that point, I'm booked. I could do nothing else with what I do. It's at a certain point, I could hire someone else on to do this. So then instead of spending two hours on this task, me overseeing someone else do it, it's only 15 minutes of my time. Therefore, then I have an hour and 45 minutes I could use to this stuff. And then I could just keep on doing that. Y you you kind of hit a plateau of what you could do. And I'm not even saying that in terms of like, I'm greedy or I need to make as much money as possible, but I'll get bored if I get at a point where it's like, okay, I filled up my slots of being a YouTube coach and then I can't do anything else uh, once I fill up my calendar. YouTube coach also sounds such a sad mm. like occupation too. Like, <laughs> it's like teaching people on how to make like a TikTok uh, or some stupid I, shit I like think that. I, I heard that there are some classes, uh, I don't know in which country, where they do teach you how to make YouTube and I think TikTok. Some, some colleges yeah. have been trying to create like degrees to be an online influencer. And it's like the, you're the uh, – a college is the last place <laughs> I would get advice on how to grow uh, a YouTube channel. I mean college it's not the, the worst degree anything. you can get in college. <laughs> what is the worst degree you can get in college, please? <laughs> Uh, arts and gender studies. Arts and gender, gender studies. studies. <laughs> I mean, if you if you got like rich parents and you just want to chill out at a college and they're paying for like, I guess that yeah, could be from that aspect. But honestly, yeah, it, it might give you some more skills about than most. I mean, man, degrees. I'm just glad that I'm a fucking dropout, dude. Like, I'm the Me only too. dropout in my family, Me and too. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm out of that shit. I, <laughs> I went to I went to college briefly, and I'm like that i'm out mm. i remember i had this like discussion even with like destiny and like sneeko was on a panel and i was like no no you shouldn't just drop out of college if you're gonna chase youtube you should go through college if you're getting a decent degree mm. if you go if you're going to college for some arts program congratulations <laughs> <you're>... <laughs> well yeah as destiny points out that we're the exceptions we're, to we're, the, mm. we're crazy we're weirdos like I, that we're able to not yeah. go to college and then just like think, hustle yeah. on the internet you should, i think you should only pr drop out if you already have a thing with youtube going on like a decent thing like like my parents are only okay with me because yeah i was already making like a decent amount from youtube so yeah they were like okay yeah, guess so but so make sure yeah don't drop out if you don't have anything on youtube yet <laughs> i i just find it so funny because i'm around people oftentimes where the pinnacle of success is a college degree and then they see me and that I'm successful and I have, you know, 16 employees. And then I'm like, yeah, I didn't go to college. And then they're just like, it, it throws their worldview off of you need that to be successful. Everyone's just, it's such like a closed minded concept that you need to uh, get some piece of paper yeah. uh, to find success in the world. It oftentimes yeah. is because people need structure in their lives and that's the more straightforward course. But no, at the same actually, time, I will go back on the thing yeah. I said. You like, if even if you don't have anything, maybe. You college might not even be for you. Maybe just go to a trade school or something like. Go to community yeah. college for two years, man. It's I mean, a lot cheaper. Uh, than what I did because I didn't uh, have fucking cash for a little bit. I, uh, I, was like, I went to community college for two weeks and then I dropped. <laughs> yeah, no, but like the, the thing is, it's like there's so many different avenues of success, and it's like, and it all goes back to like it actually all yeah. just goes back to the Reddit moderation comment. It's like you have all these avenues that you can go down. Mm. If you now, think college you gonna is going to be worth it for you, go ahead. It's not my money. You're actually. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. 
<laughs> why go to college when you could just be a Reddit moderator? Whoa, that's true. Then you're making zero bucks, and you you know you get paid in exposure. You get paid in like you know yeah. the prestige <laughs> to moderate the biggest. Yeah, and Reddit get all those Reddit rewards world. too. Dude, and then, and then it's like, it's, it's like, people are shocked. It's like, why do they all turn out to be like groomers and shit like <laughs> in two years afterwards? I'm like, come on now. Like, really? Do I have to explain why these anti-social types turn out to be the weirdest dudes? Uh, well, what was the know. old meme on 4chan back in, in the day that the, the 4chan moderators, they called them janitors and they always, dem yeah, they always show them, huh? Yeah, Jannies, yeah. Yeah, the Jannies, and there was always the, uh, the janitor from the, sh the animated show Arthur that's represented them, and they yeah. always ate Hot Pockets. So that, was, <laughs> that was the meme. I mean, like, the, the, the thing is, if you're going to spend all your time on the internet, do something that's going to kick back to you every once in a while, right? Like, mm. like do something that's going to make, like, your, your next day better, right? Like, if you're going to sit there and, you know, play a video game eight hours a day and not get anything out of it, then can do something else, you know what I mean? Like, or if you're gonna sit there on Discord and moderate some YouTuber servers, like at least make sure that YouTuber's fucking paying you, you know oh, what I mean? Like, ban all Jesus the people Christ. in this Twitch chat. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's the well, craziest like, thing with like a lot of these people, like the moderators are paying to be like tier three subs uh, for some woman on Twitch. And, and also they're just doing that job for free on top of that to get the honor of it. I mean, like, that that's where, like, parasocial shit really, really comes into it. Like, come on now. Like, that's that that that's where, like, I really feel like some creators who are large enough that can pay their moderation team, and they don't. I'm like, that's just really, really shitty. Like, if, you, if you're if you a YouTuber making shit tons so of that's... cash, like, you should be able to pay a moderation it's staff. It's like slave work. Oh. It literally is, though. It's like, fuck. And, you know, it gets even f up when like some of them are probably kids moderating too so like shit if you wanted to bring oh, in like child labor laws into the oh, mix too yeah. like <laughs> you got these kids working like unhealthy hours just to fucking make sure you're not seeing any like bad shit on your stream i tend to have like a pretty unmoderated stream because i'm like i just don't care like if yeah. You're oh yeah shit, me like, too and I, the whole chat it. spanning but i don't want to like give someone the unfortunate title of a moderator <laughs> I, yeah. this, I got this inquiry email from, like, this company. They had, like, some software solution to get rid of, like, spam comments on my YouTube channel. And they kept on following up and, like, they wanted to sell. And it's like, listen, I don't care. I, even if you said it was free, I wouldn't do it. I, like, let mm. them spam in my comment section. For all yeah, they I, I just, I, I could give engagement. less of a... Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I could care less. Like, fucking, like YouTube's like auto mod is gonna take care. It's not gonna look like fucking cozy TV, but it's, it's, it's gonna run. Like, it is what it is. And that thing will probably just hack your YouTube. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, that's how some YouTubers get fucking yeah. hacked because they take like the dumbest sponsorship yeah. deals and then like, oh shit, my YouTube channel is gone. Shout out to Linus Tech Tips. Well, you know how many fucking, dude? There's so many YouTubers that like reach out to me, and again, I'm not like fucking going out to name names here, but like, fucking, some of y'all mother have the biggest channels in the game and you are so stupid and hungry for like a couple thousand dollars that you're willing to risk your youtube channel by opening some fucking shady ass pdf file like come on now like I've, I've had a few people like i opened this one link by mistake uh what do i do i'm like um change your passwords and sign out dumbass and next time don't get fucking greedy <laughs> that's like my usual answer now i'm like dude how fucking desperate are you that you're kind of fucking but I don't know, man. It's 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 wild, dude. Even the YouTuber space when it comes to sponsorships is really weird too. Like Kick.com. And I don't. Even, I think Aiden Ross has he quit the internet now? No, he. Uh, it was still back. streaming last night, I think. Okay, because I thought he was like quitting because the internet was being rude to him or something. <laughs> dude, he's like my favorite character, man. Like he's I remember, like just hmm. he he is like unironically one of the funniest like idiots you will find on the internet, dude. Like it's just. Like, that guy, like, what was he going to have, like, Kanye West on for an interview or some and shit? And then it fell through like, last Aww. second. I remember he once said that he thought the average salary of someone was $100,000. Dude, that was my favorite <laughs> clip in the world. Like, in Do you the think genuine... he's trolling? No, see, the thing about Aiden Ross is, like, I, I've been around enough, like, idiots in my life. Because here's the thing, like, I don't, I don't really like to talk about my family too much, but I have a family member that is literally Aiden Ross. <laughs> Except the worst version of Aiden Ross, like an actual, genuine, stupider version. <laughs> the the mannerisms that Aiden displays, like when that hundred thousand dollar quote got mentioned, and he was like shocked, looking at the dude next to him. That's the same face I saw one of my family members make, and I was like, this guy is actually just dumb. Like, 
He's not like the, the thing is Aiden is smart when it comes to getting clipped, right? Like I think everyone has an intelligence, like a really good intelligence. Aiden is probably one of the best influencers. He's better than all of us in this room right now because Aiden has the ability to like go viral on like the dumbest shit possible, which is not easy, right? Like it's not the easiest thing to do. Aiden's stupidity is arguably the one thing that's made him one of the biggest streamers in the game. Because if you look at Aiden and his content, it's nothing special. It's just some fucking kid playing NBA or something. The thing that made Aiden blow up hard, like really hard, was he did these things called like sussy compilations, where like he brought these rappers on with him and he just pretended to be gay. And like the rappers gave the biggest reaction because they were like, whoa, what are you trying to do? Like suck my d Obviously Aiden was trying to get like a clip. So he would just harness like 10, 20, 30 seconds and it would go viral on TikTok. It would go viral on YouTube. And that's honestly the only reason I ever heard of Aiden Ross. Like if you ask me, oh, do you, do you ever watch an Aiden Ross stream? I'm like, no, but I can tell you I've watched his clips, a bunch of them. And that's pretty much how he succeeds. So like the reason this motherfucker trends and it's the same reason like i will say even sneeko trends too is because they just find a way to get themselves clipped mm. and be shared by their biggest enemies yep. right everyone it's why talks sometimes, about them exactly it's why sometimes i'm like oh man i'm like every time i retweet aiden to like joke at him because it's so funny i'm like oh this is exactly what he wanted mm. but at the end of the day i'm like i just don't even care like he's just doing some dumb stupid shit i'm gonna laugh at dumb stupid shit and i hope that he keeps doing dumb mm. stupid shit because I like when Aiden does, when Aiden acts stupid on the internet. It yeah. is what it is. Mm, yeah. Like when when he's sitting there with train wrecks and he's stun locking train wrecks in a call. Where like, do you guys see that clip where Aiden's like, so how, it, how can men get like you know assaulted, like sexually, right? And Aiden was like, uh, sorry, tra train wrecks was like, uh, actually no, Aiden, you're wrong. Like he had to stop <laughs> for like five seconds because the sheer stupidity is processing. Mm. I'm like, this is how you know the guy just goes at it. Same with Sneeko, right? Like, mm. Sneeko is an idiot, in my opinion, but, like, he just knows how to get clipped easily. Mm. Like, it is what it is. That's but, why so many people you don't like are famous. Exactly. 100%. You're absolutely right about it. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I, 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 I want them to keep doing dumb shit <laughs> because it's more stuff to talk and laugh about, right? Yep. Like, that's the... If the, if the internet if the internet didn't have Aiden Ross or Sneeko, we'd be in a much, much more boring I've, circle. I've always said... Well, that's the thing that people want the internet to be boring. And that's what... It's selfish, but I want these people to be around just because that's what makes my life fun is just seeing crazy stuff happen online. If it was all just like everyone got banned the second that yeah. they said something outrageous, it's like, what is life even at that point? <laughs> I yeah, know it like, sounds kind of sad, uh, everyone it's needs true. some clowns to laugh at you yeah. know what i mean like what the f yeah and like no more cancel like, culture yeah <laughs> well they just yeah. want some like lukewarm late night talk show host comedians making like slightly spicy jokes about celebrity that's that's <sighs> that is all they want to be allowed anything beyond that sneeko andrew tate saying crazy things no that's you, ruining you know the my children. favorite bits is i've literally loved andrew tate in the last two months not because like his messages resonate with me it's because when he was in prison bro his tweet chain was crazy <laughs> he's like i am now teleported into the matrix and i'm fighting fly i'm mm. like dude what the f so was someone else on? tweeting for him or was he tweeting it from I think prison somebody else oh, was tweeting for him. yeah but he was i think he was able to talk to somebody while in prison who transcribed ah. the tweets um, yeah it's like the thing I like about Sneeko a lot too is like you'll just watch this guy and he'll say like the most blatantly stupid shit and you're just sitting over like easily debunkable stupid shit and it's just like he may not realize it but he's like the internet's biggest like fucking jester right now and like we're, we're just laughing at him. <laughs> it's he like if you take it. if you take uh, maybe really who knows if you take all of that away like the internet's just like a, it's one of the reasons why like i kind of have an issue with like the streaming culture of today like the twitch streamer groups because it's like they don't want to have any beef they don't want to do anything like even with creator mm -hmm. clash 2 that's coming up they don't want to have any like real drama between people it's all got to be this fake wwe okay. thing i'm like no the, Part and, of the reasons why I watch this kind of shit is because I do want to see two people that hate each mm, other knock, knock their asses out in a ring, you know what I mean? That's why yeah, I, I, I don't really I think, like the top Twitch streamers. Honestly, <laughs> that's also why I think the metaverse stuff is failing, is because it's too corporate, too mm, clean, it's about business moderated. solutions. Like, I, it, the metaverse, 
it works with Roblox because you can do whatever you want to on there. Mm. It's just craziness. It's not just because there's kids. I'd love it if on the metaverse you were able to go and like dress up as the Joker and like break into people's houses. That would be like amazing. That's why VR chat is successful. You can do all that exactly. shit. That's what I was about to say. Like so, VR so, chat, like when you just have like insane like groups together with like the, every type of you know model no moderation that's this what's is, come out of there mm. this is basically the, the, what happens with every single big platform that becomes popular since the beginning of the internet in mm -hmm. the early stages it's the wild west they allow whatever you want to it gets big 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 and then at some point journalists come in and then complain about it and then try to get advertisers to pull their money and then at that point all the fun goes away because uh, now they have to make a profit and they're too big to fail and they have investors that they need to you know appease and then things become less fun but in the early stages you need to have that wild west element to get people interested and metaverse yeah, you need, does not you have need that. to be like kick.com for a little bit and then you become normal well it's it's like reddit right like remember early days of reddit they used to have like no moderation on the subreddit it's like I well, remember they had just moderators, years but they were crazy. Like they, they allowed <laughs> yeah. subreds about anything. If you, do you remember Violent Anchors? Yeah, yeah, I remember Violent Anchors. That guy was running like every single subreddit uh, jailbait. That was like the big <laughs> one. He like he wasn't even a creep. He was just trying to be edgy, and he was just like some middle aged man that just to 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 mess with people created that, and it was so successful that Reddit was giving him awards. They were like giving him like little golden Reddit alien bobbleheads. I oh. really wish somebody frames the Reddit award for r slash jailbait. They would get <laughs> oh, like. <what> the <sighs> I didn't Reddit, know that. The That's OG, insane, dude. The, the OG creators of Reddit were like ardent free speech supporters, and they just allowed anything. And then at a certain point, it just, uh, you know, we have to hone this in. We need to try to get advertisers. Oh, look, there's these journalists are writing articles about oh. how we're facilitating cyberbullying. And then it all, it all gets brought yeah, in, yeah. and it gets bland and boring. And if they, if they try to bring it in too much, that's what's happening with uh, Twitch right now. They're going to die because mm. they're they're just too hardcore about it. Yeah, about that. YouTube's not per yeah, yeah YouTube's yeah. not perfect, but they do better at least. <laughs> yeah, about that Reddit thing. I think they actually like erased one of the, that guy's name from one of the founders of Reddit's just because of how controversial he was, and that's just mm -hmm. stupid. Like, uh. are they really moderating Twitch though that hard? Art because I, I last I checked onto Twitch, like they still have like straight up fart like. <laughs> well, they well, they allow the women on there, but like the, the high end male streamers that have an audience and they're really big, if they go out of line and get too wedgy, they do ban them. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the female streamers, they don't care. They'll, they'll allow yeah, them they have a whole section them. for them. I mean, like, bro, I uh, like a Gideon tweeted it out and I saw it. I was like, dude, this like chick had like the fucking mic stuffed up her <laughs> asshole. That was an old like, picture, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, I think that, yeah, that's I was like, I before. recognize it because it like it triggered the fucking Mandela effect. I'm like, this ain't new. This is Indie Fox from years ago. <laughs> but I'm just like, damn. Like, even if you go into like like a right now, like during the whole hot tub era, it's like, bro. At this point, at what point are we just gonna say this is softcore pornography and like fin dog shit going mm -hmm. on? But who's I? I still do not understand. Have you ever met a guy that will admit to watching that stuff? You know what I mean? Like I'm watching, no, hopefully not. watching some girl in a bikini in a hot tub asking her how her day's been, like, and spend three hours sitting there watching her and donate like a hundred dollars to her chat. Like, <laughs> I've I, never met a dude who's gonna say yes to that. <laughs> but there's tons of them. Who, who are these guys? Hmm. I mean, like, they, it could be. Well, it, yeah, they're not gonna say. I don't think they want to say it publicly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, yeah, you, you have to be like a, you have to be like an under the fucking radar coomer if you're. <laughs> uh, the like I don't think you'll ever find a guy that admits to buying OnlyFans or any of that stuff because it just comes across as really, really. But at, at least with OnlyFans, it, it then goes a step where you're it, it's you know explicit content usually. With the Twitch streamers, it doesn't even go that far. It's just them sitting in a hot tub and like them running their mouth saying benign stuff to an audience of just a bunch of dudes it's parasocial shit though like you have to imagine like these are guys that don't have any real world experience talking to women so it's like if they can just give somebody ten dollars and have their name repeated by an attractive woman that's enough like that dude you, you have no idea how much that's gonna set them off like they probably already came as soon as that gets mentioned like we can't relate to it because i don't think any of us are like oh shit better donate 50 bucks to the queen or the king i guess and fucking get something out of it none of us are doing that 
So it's like we can't. But like, imagine if you've never talked to a girl, you never like been left your you know Sonic the Hedgehog gamer circle. This is it, man. Like this is this is you peeking right there. Wow. And I don't know. It's 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 a like to me when I look at shit like that, I'm like I look at it like it's FinDom, like the financial domination shit, or like some weird parasocial shit. Where it's like I look at I, I I'm like you're literally just taking advantage of like the most socially inept types of individuals. That's it. <laughs> like, and it's like they really don't have a way out. Like they don't have like anybody that they can you know talk to and get out of that circle. It is what it is. But um, I want to use certain words, but I know YouTube is against it. <laughs> I mentioned you know the I word or whatever the f it is. But uh, oh. yeah, yeah. Like, I feel I, like those the I word people are not doing that, uh, paying those women money. Mm. Well, I mean, like that's when it like it's like mm. you either you either like slip into that when you don't get the real attention that you're trying to crave for, and you, you know because I feel like just, I feel okay, like the, yeah, I, I've learned yeah. this, I've seen this a lot where a lot of the people that are calling out the I word people, they're also I words, but they're just like living in la la land and believing that they're not, and then those are probably the type of guys that are you know, giving money to female Twitch streamers. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, the thing is, if you're giving money to a Twitch streamer in general, it's like, are you giving it to show support for them? Or are you giving it to them because you believe they're your friend? Because if it's the latter, you're lying to yourself. Like, none of these people remember your name after you've, like, donated cash to them. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I make it pretty explicitly clear. It's like, listen, we're mm -hmm. like, you know, we make content on YouTube, but it's like, we're... It's like a separation, right? Like yes, yeah. I'd like to make that clear too, please. Yeah, I, I, I see it as a symbiotic relationship of I make content, you watch the advertisements, and I get paid, and that allows me to make more content. It's it's not a friendship. It's a it's a mm. business transaction. Yeah, uh, you're a Lego block to my success. Exactly. <laughs> like you're real and spoken like a YouTube capitalist right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Going I'm back to that. <laughs> well, that's the thing, though, is like, some people see that as rude or something like I'd much that's a lot more honest and nice than deluding your fans into mm -hmm. believing that you have a friendship with all of them. Yeah. I've seen YouTubers just you all you guys are my friends. I love you guys so much. <laughs> You're all my kids. I love you to my audience to your oh, subscribers. Right. <laughs> bro, probably dream <laughs> dream yeah. has done that. Oh, dude, the dream shit, the Minecraft <laughs> channels were like you're right. They're like the fucking worst for that, dude. And it's some... like 12-year-olds that they're doing that too. Like it's some 12-year-old kids sitting in a room thinking that they they have a genuine friendship. Like that's how you get you know, taxi driver stuff happening where, you know, I, I'd be so paranoid if I, if I had like people that thought they were my friends on the internet trying to like reach out to me and talk to me all the time. I thought they, I think that they come to my house. Yeah. That, well, that's sometimes that does tend to happen. Like, I mean, yeah. in, when it comes to like the Minecraft shit, it's like, it's super weird to me. Cause it's like, man, ever since like, ever since like the fucking days of Bashiverse and all that bullshit. It's like, anytime I hear the word Minecraft <laughs> YouTuber getting friendly with the audience, it immediately sets off, like, Catholic Church vibes to me, you know? Like, I'm like, hold on a minute. <laughs> it's the same with, like, any YouTuber, like, for, like, if you're making kids content, like, it's gonna, like, you know, just don't get too close to the audience. Like, especially when you know your audience is, like, in 10 years of age. Yeah, whatever happened to nature. Stranger Danger. Dude, I think that's the thing. Like, the, the problem is, like, parents will just drop, like, a f***ing smartphone in front of their kids, and then they'll be watching these, like, they'll, their parents get replaced with, like, the YouTuber. That's about it, right? Like, f***ing, they're going to get their life morals from, like, some guy that plays, like, Minecraft videos. <laughs> and that's it. So, you know, it's, f***ing, it's a weird world to get into. It's a wild situation. I know with my aunt's kids, like, they watch a shit ton of those Roblox YouTubers, like, in the youngest one not the oldest the older one is old enough to know better but like young young one is like he's watching like in all the like all the all the youtube like we're talking their audience is so young that they're doing back to school merch drops like that's how young the audience is like for Roblox <laughs> channels so and it's it's a different world we live in man like it's, oh, it's no. wild oh no the kids are gonna get bullied at school <laughs> Bro, but like nowadays, like even my like aunt's oldest is like all he'll do is watch like TikToks, and it's like he's getting into like the like some of the TikToks I've been seeing him watch are like strangely like softcore pornographic. <laughs> like on his phone, he's like whipping out these TikToks, and I'm like, that's not dancing, bro. Like if that's dancing, that's dancing at a fucking strip club. I'm just saying, <laughs> like what are you doing? <laughs> oh no, it's just it, it's weird, dude. Like and then, and then now they're jumping into like the Andrew Tate like rabbit hole. So it's like that's all they'll watch is like the Sigma grind set memes, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like I, don't, I don't know how to like fix. I don't even care enough to like fix that. I'm like, your your parents got to do a better job, but you know, 
it is what it is. But yeah, that's uh, that's unfortunately the the world of the internet we live in. We're too detached from it. We're we're, we're too out of the matrix, is, is what I think. Yeah, fun, fun fact, guys: the broad the broadband TV Twitter account is privated. I think that happened at first when Ethan first tweeted at them. Well, it's still blocked now. Yeah. Okay, but like, what do you think the replies look like when the H three <laughs> army jumped in? Like, yeah, bro, like come on, I, I can't blame them too much. <laughs> yeah, like come on now. And it's also not like their f***ing Twitter account was pulling in mega f***ing, like, engagement either. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, f*** Broadband TV, actually. F you know what? Actually, Broadband, pay King back, okay? All right? Before, Please pay King. <laughs> pay, pay King back first. Ethan, Ethan's going to bankrupt everyone. Yeah. If they're only I worth think... $6 million currently, what do you think their CEO makes? Well, that's $6 million on, like, their f***ing assets that they like, who knows if they've been, like, reassessed for that. Oh, like, no. <laughs> who knows? Their CEO is probably making, like, six figures uh, a, a year. Not a month, a year. Yeah. Mm. She can't be loaded. Bro, they, uh, listen, I, I know that you don't want to hear this, King, so you <laughs> plug your ears up real quick. I don't think they have enough money to pay back anyone. I, I really don't think they have enough uh, cash. So, so wait, back to that whole Defy thing. Did YouTube actually repay those YouTubers or no? I've never, I, I never I, heard I, of that I, before. I, 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 I got that off of like Ethan, I'm mm. sure. Like I want to say that Ethan was the one that regurgitated it. But I'm going to read into that actually closer because I want to say that YouTube made everyone whole because it was only like a million something down the hole for them. Mm. And it would have been good PR, but... The thing is, is like you can't apply that logic here because f***ing broadband TV is way larger than f***ing <laughs> Defy. And YouTube may not want to fit the bill again <laughs> for I, something I mean, that's that big. Like one thing Ethan said was like telling uh, YouTube like stop sending money if they, they might be bankrupt. So hopefully, I don't know how the payment system works. If YouTube like pays out the network like right like a month afterwards, like it with might AdSense. might be a specific contract with mm. YouTube and the MCN that even you YouTube so yeah, may, hopefully, may, who knows? Maybe can they can like stop the payments to broadband and just give it to the creators who, with that one was like, with it, broadband. It, who I think knows? It's like what Art said. It's like what Art said. It's like I think you have to treat it like a copyright dispute. YouTube will not want to get involved along just like processing the bare technicals of it. Like this is explicitly between you and a legal mm. matter. YouTube is not jumping into it. They're I, not like they, they I, don't even want to get involved. I will say what usually happens with bankruptcy is not saying broadband's going to be bankrupt. I don't know what's going on there. No, don't, yep. don't quote me on anything. But how these bankruptcies mm -hmm. work is that they come in, they, they bring someone on board that specializes in bankruptcies. And they say, okay, here's all the assets. Here's all the money in the bank accounts. Here's all the money that they owe. They owe people a billion dollars. Well, all the assets, let's sell them off. Let's find what's left in the bank accounts. What's left is 500 million. Each person, all the creditors, they get paid 50%. Um, and then they just split up that money accordingly. Yeah, maybe, what's left. maybe broadband has some crazy good f***ing insurance that will pay them uh. out. And then they can use that. Who knows? I, I just know that it's so interesting because the online influencer market has never experienced a recession before. You think about it, the 2008 recession, YouTubers weren't really a thing. That was the early stages. There was a couple people making a living off it. We've yeah. only experienced an upward trajectory. And now that like we're at a point where the economy is kind of weird, people are losing money, things are going down. There's some like, in, uh, there's some brands that are completely getting demonized and thrown out. Like we just saw with established titles, like they went from like having the biggest ad spend on influencer history to being completely thrown out yeah they were one of the top ones yeah um, and then uh and then you have a situation where even if you look into the esports world with like face clan and all these guys it's like bro they are and it's not just face clan like people like to shit on phase and trust me it would have a good field day with it they've they've definitely earned some of the bad press but like holy shit the, the entire industry is up I mean, I'll stand by this. The only time that anything in the YouTube space actually works long term in terms of a bigger business is if a very smart YouTuber is the one running the operation. When you have some businessman that's not from the YouTube space come in and try to run something like this, it always falls apart because they don't know. It's such a fickle business. Like any of us, if we just made 10 videos that sucked in a row, we'd be done. 
Like that's all it would take for us to ruin ourselves and our business and our career that we've spent a decade growing. Mm -hmm. um, so you bring some guy on that doesn't have experience to grow something and making content for FaZe and they're coming up with the ideas and now they're throwing money at it. It fails every single mm -hmm. time. It's just not possible for someone from traditional media or the business space to come into YouTube, act like they know what they're doing and make it grow. Uh, but they got Snoop Dogg. The FaZe guys also themselves too because they never made content for like six months on their youtube channel so it's like yeah. i don't expect anyone to, to I come in ask, and watch i ask people watch what does dog. phase do <laughs> what does face do phase do what why are they worth money and the ex explanation i'd get is oh they're like a lifestyle brand uh like the young i'm like see, if you ask me i'm like well, i see them selling? in esports games i see them in like you know in Call of Duty and Siege from time to time, like their logo. So I'm like, oh, they're running like a esports organization. I wouldn't even think lifestyle brand because I don't watch the f***ing YouTube content. <laughs> I don't think there's much money in esports. I think the esports thing is overhyped. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think uh, I think it's like Charlie and like Ludwig who are running their moist moguls. I think they're actually operating at a loss, if I'm not mistaken. I um, I don't see how much money is in that. I I've run the numbers. On... I I get in Korea. Uh... You know, some Blizzard games have a big following, and then they could fill up an arena. But it's limited. It's it, like the, the 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 world of sports. That's a, that's a really tough racket, especially to break into and grow a new sport from scratch. Um, especially yeah. with how fickle gaming is, where a game is popular that it falls off. Games don't. Yeah, stay it's not like baseball forever. or soccer or like baseball any of these is big the sports. same game yeah. for a hundred years. Exactly. With slight changes with yeah. esports, it's this umbrella of all these games that go in and out of style. So you could grow yeah. an organization for one game. That game's not popular anymore. If you haven't hedge your bets with the right game that's going to be the next big up and coming property yeah. then you're screwed and then you're out of business and then your players are like very focused on the one specific type of game too right like well they're only going know. to be good at one game like you spend 10 years becoming really good at league of legends league of legends <laughs> falls off or i don't know pick a game mm. you know one falls off it's not like they could jump over and just start playing overwatch and then be good at it no you have to get like trained individuals for each sport and then you have all these people that are sinking tons of money into it um i just i i don't see uh I, there, there's definitely a business there but i think a lot of people are sinking money into these organizations and it's they a good never business if you know how to sell product through that business but the the, the ad space is not cheap they charge premiums yeah uh so it, it's not it's like you could get sponsorships from youtubers for a fraction of the cost of what it costs to sponsor one of these esport competitions yeah, because um, they're trying to price it at like in some commercial like TV level when it's it's not. But it's it's actually know. crazy how cheap you could sponsor YouTubers for. <laughs> like, there's YouTubers that just have empty inventory that they could like endorse products, and they just don't have people that want to sponsor them because they don't have the right type of content. Right. Um, meanwhile, esports are getting all these like premium spots just because you know some guy said that that's the hot new thing. Well, but that's a <laughs> rant for another day. <laughs> rant for another day for sure. Well, Art, you brought us in here. It's time for you to take us out. We've been alrighty. For... Well, uh, thanks everyone for showing up. I promise that Oompaville and Nux will be back next week. Actually, yeah. I can't sorry, no, that no, no, sorry, it's me instead. Yeah, sorry, oh. it's me and the gamer from it's, it's a gamer from Mars and Plain Rock One Two Four. Hey, the, you guys, the, are, real parents you guys will be back next week, stop. everyone. But we well, um, just got to get that machine up and running. That's going to be our. And that's going to change things. And then that's going to change is, the game here. We're Nux, just, is uh, a, Nux is in a vacation stay right now, so and he needed one. So. <laughs> he needs a vacation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Plain Rock, do you have anything you want to pitch, shout out, get people to go yes, check out? Check out go my channel. Me. I destroy stuff, waste money for comedy reasons. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Plain Rock 124. Let's go. He needs the money, guys. Yeah, he just got a new I, house. Uh, and, and my and my network's probably gonna go bankrupt and take my money. Oh, don't worry, Allegedly. you'll get your money back. You're fine. Allegedly, no. <laughs> listen, positive thoughts. BBTV is the most worth worth company in California or Vancouver right now. Mm -hmm. You're good. <laughs> they got billions of dollars right now. Mm -hmm. Never positive. trust Canadians. Never. Trust and if someone's gonna off. sue me, I would like to add allegedly to like. All the statements I made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all under the opinion. I'm only following the opinion of what Ethan said when I was talking about VBTV off of his videos. And um, again, everything is in allegedly. And uh, yeah, boom.